with another exciting interview with Kevin Burns on Gospel TV. You heard him on My Gospel Soul, Blog Talk Radio. Well, now we get to talk to him in person. Amen. Woman to woman, man to man. We're going to be talking about love, the greatest gift. So check it out and make sure that you share this video with a friend. Welcome to Gospel TV, as I promised, Kevin Burns Jr. I always say Kevin Burns, but he's a junior. Praise God, amen. Awesome man of God, and I thank God for the opportunity to be able to interview him live. Praise God. So, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you for having me. <laughs> We're going to uh, hear some spoken word from him on today. We're also going to talk about his book, Heart That Goes There. But we're definitely, in the next segment, want to talk a little bit about being single, love, being a Christian, and all that good stuff. So you definitely want to keep it locked right here on Gospel TV. Welcome back. We are sitting here, y'all know, with Kevin Burns Jr. Praise God. Amen. He's going to talk to us a little bit in this first segment about his book and also spoken word. I heard him at the Secret Word Cafe and it blessed me, praise God. So I'm hoping that in this segment we get to hear a little bit of it. Amen? Amen. Alright. Tell us a little bit about your book. My book is a poetry book. It's about a book of love. It's just poems that I compiled about love, how I felt about love, different situations that I was going through. I just did it in a imaginative, imaginative way. Inspiration way. I just think love and poetry go hand in hand. Amen. Poetry is probably the speech of love, language of love. So I believe that it helped me get my feelings out. So yeah. it's pretty good. Yeah. Was it? You know, I find that some people that have been that have been working on books for years. Mm -hmm. When you begin to write this book, did it take a long time to get this to put it together? Well, I actually wrote the book before I even knew I was going to write the book. Oh. You know, I just wrote a lot of poems and had them all together. And I had a lot of friends saying, hey, man, what you going to do with your poems? What you going to do with your poetry? The book, I mean, the book that got pretty thick. Oh, my. I, was, I don't know. And they were saying, well, you need to do something before you don't do anything at all. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I decided <Nugget>. to. <laughs> yeah. I decided to just put them all to um, get a compile of a little section of it. I noticed that I had a lot of books about love at this specific time. I don't know why, <laughs> you know? So I decided to put the books, put it all in a book. And then I wanted to go through the creative process of publishing the book. So I just decided to do that, compile it, and see how that journey would be. Okay. So that's kind of how I came to the part and goals there. Yeah. Was, the, uh, was the journey hard? The journey is interesting. The journey is still ongoing. Mm -hmm. So, but I learned a lot. Learned a lot about self-publishing and getting yourself out there and creating things artistically. You know, I was going to ask you uh, in our radio interview um, when you first started the book to after it was published, it was out there in your own life, did you see some growth for yourself? I definitely did. I definitely did see some growth as far as creating a project having faith to go ahead and go through with the project. It made me do things that I normally don't do. I'm not really into self-promotion. Right. And then it made me have to get out there and kind of put myself out there. Certain skills and talents that you have, you couldn't just hide it. Yeah. Kind of hide <laughs> it under a bushel or yeah. different things like that. So once you say you've done a book, people really don't let that go. Yeah. You know, you can't just casually say, oh yeah, I got a little book out there, you know. Yeah. People was like, yeah, you got a book? What? Well, I need you to come out and do this. And I need you to write this. <laughs> so from there, it actually opened some doors. And I think it was good because it allowed me to use the talent that God had gave me, which I might not have used if I wouldn't have went through that. So it was kind of that kick that pushed. Yeah. And it's also a testament to um, 
your gift will make room for you. Yes. Praise God. And it's a lot of us um, that are doing things that is not really our call. It's not our passion. And I believe that when you follow your passion, God, that just like the scripture says, your gift will indeed make room for you. You know, in this um, next piece, praise God, you're going to bless us. Yeah. Right quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So before he does that, I definitely want him to give contact information on how you can get in contact with him if you would like for him to come out and speak. Like I say, he's spoken at different places. He, uh, you know, no matter what the place is, if you know that there's a need to hear what uh, you know God is doing or uh, using him to do, then go ahead and make sure that you access that contact information that's coming up right now. Okay, you can reach me at. Katie Burns 9386 so that's K-D-B-U-R-N-S 9386 at gmail.com you can also reach me at heart who goes there at gmail.com I'm on Facebook Kevin Burns I'm on Twitter at Kevin Burns Jr. you can reach me any of those places just let me know what's going on let me know what, what you need to point for what direction you're going for and I'll be more than happy I'll be more than happy to come out and help anywhere I can all right, all right. Well, in this next piece, you're gonna see. Uh, I call it Roddy brother, brother Burns. Amen. He's gonna, he's gonna spit for us. Amen. All right, check it out. I'm gonna do a poem called "The Darkness Within," and basically, it's just a call out to people to talk to those people that might not be saved. And in this poem, I speak from the viewpoint of somebody who is not saved. So I like to call the individual John Jackson. I like to say the individual is talking to his little brother and is he's kind of on his deathbed or dying and things are going through his mind. He just wants to get through to his brother. So this is what he says to him. So. Man, don't you know this is the closest I'll ever let you to it? I mean, close enough to put your fingerprints on the glass and peer through it. See your reflection in it and then suddenly lose it as I turn from this vision that you are currently viewing. A cracked mirror vision of what you could be doing. A road map for a road that you should never be cruising. An X marking the spot of treasure you should never pursue because this treasure lies buried in the temple of the ruin. I am speaking to you as one who is influenced by the armies of the soldiers in the devil's movement. I mean, don't get me wrong, I was no easy recruitment. I wanted to stand so firm in the word of which I was rooted. To see my branches sway back and forth like the devil's breeze. I too wanted to be as cool as those before me. So fruitless with my harvest and leaveless with my trees. And now all that grows is weeds from where I planted my seeds. So I smoke that from which grows from my seeds. And I'm lonely, so I search for love and promiscuity. I even made an idol god full of riches and had plenty of food for thought. But I refused to do the dishes, and now my mind stays full of these pornographic images. And no, so you're not confused. No, I am not a Christian. See, all my life I've been plagued with this sin. The spiritual leprosy that's defiling me from within and nobody will even talk to me. Not even my next to kin, even though they deal with the same sin that I'm within. So I contend that I will continue to resemble the simple man. Even though my soul will soon burn like a potato in your hand. See, I've been marked for the slaughter like a brand. Destined to feel the heat way worse than your tan. Separated from God. And not because of the melanin in my skin. But simply because of my sin. Trapped to my true nature like the pen trapped in paper. Those markings I can't erase. That nature I can't escape from. Atoms, atoms of disobedience. Even my evolution can't outrun. So each moment of weakness is what my stillbirth is coming from. I am pain, son. Iniquity's child. Whether cold or hot, my commitment will be mild. You can see my regrets. They go on for miles. Why does the path to hell? Please don't walk down my aisle. But it's inevitable if you know what sin can do. And if you don't, please let me tell you the truth. See, it looks like a million dead Jewish bodies. And it's cold. 
thoughtless like leaving babies in the trash with nobody. And it travels on bullets to your closest friends. So sometimes it travels to her. Sometimes it travels to him. And it wraps itself around the nooses in the necks of men. See, much like slavery, sin is nobody's friend. And sometimes, sometimes it, it feels like the priest who was touching the child. It's so cold, like your commitment for God gone mild. And even then, sometimes, sometimes it's like that gun that was on your dressing, but now it's in your hand. Farewell, my friend. Good night. And that poem is just how I felt that it might feel if you were going through sin and hurting from sin and if you want to tell somebody how you felt from sin. So that's why I wrote that perspective. Alright, alright. Now I want you to click on the next clip and also tune into my gospel soul that comes on 12 p.m. Monday through Friday. And then call in to a live show at 347-826-9424.